Hello friends. Welcome back. My name is Ramon. How are you today? In today's video, we are going to be testing out yet another sunscreen, mineral sunscreen to be exact, and that is going to be the Versed Guardza Daily Mineral Sunscreen. I've seen this hyped up a lot, and by a lot, I mean Susan Yara talked about it in her video with Versed Skincare, and I've just seen Versed in a lot of places recently, and I honestly did not have any awareness of them before like the month of April. So I'm on a sunscreen kick, on a mineral sunscreen kick I should say, and I'm excited to test this one out. I've already tested the Pareto Comfy Water and the Dear Claire's Midday UV Blue Shield, so check out those videos if you haven't already. But with the sunscreen today I'm going to be testing out the now upgraded to four Bs, and that's going to be Beard, Beating, Beat, and Brow Skin Friendly. Will this live up to its claims? Is it going to be Ramon approved? Let's find out. So the Guards Up Daily Mineral Sunscreen claims on the box. It's 15.2% zinc oxide formula, no titanium dioxide, no chemical filters, purely mineral. SPF 35, that's just a notch above normal for the physical sunscreen filters. Generally, in order to get a really good broad spectrum protection, zinc oxide is a great filter for that, but you need a really high percentage of it, so the 15.2% is really indicative of that. Here's the tea on this one. It's only 50 mil. 50 mil is not a lot especially since this is like a $20, $20, $21 sunscreen. It's not a lot. For comparison, similar price point, my Claire's Midday UV, also a physical sunscreen. It comes in at 80 mil. So for American perspective, 1.7 fluid ounces, 2.7 fluid ounces claims. Use me if you want reef safe protection. Good to know against TVA and EVB rays. I said that already. It doesn't leave a chalky finish on your skin. We'll get to that. I'm a quick absorbing non nano zinc oxide SPF with blue light blockers and pollution fighting antioxidants to protect your skin from devices and environmental stressors. So here's a tea on that. Also, it's free of like bad stuff, but no parabens. Parabens aren't bad. Um, it claims the blue light protection, and that is protection against, you know, phone light, computer light. It claims that the antioxidants in this are the ones that help with that. The C phenyl and moringa seed extract, which are like like two of the like ingredient claims, but also has iron oxide in it. Iron oxide is what's going to give this its tint. That's why I said we'll get to that when it comes to non chalky finish. It is a tinted mineral SPF intended to be used for all skin types and skin colors. Iron oxide kind of fortifies some of the UV protection, but also gives us its tint. But also it has some studies showing that it does offer that blue light protection. It also has a sea funnel and moringa seed extract, which give it the antioxidant claims and the antioxidants offer pollution protection and free radical protection. But if you look at the ingredient list, those are the like last four ingredients on the ingredient list along with aloe. Basically, ingredient list shows you concentration of those ingredients in the whole product and those are the last things on the list. And there are some other antioxidants in this like vitamin E in the form of glucoferol that they're not really laying claim to, but those are higher on the ingredient list and are gonna give you a little bit more antioxidant power since they're a little bit more concentrated. So let's try it out. As per my usual videos, I'm going to be doing a three-day wear test. Day one for this video is going to be minimal skincare, minimal makeup. Day two, maximum skincare with minimal makeup. And day three is going to be minimal skincare with a full beat on, just to see how this pairs with makeup throughout my different day's needs, how it's going to work with different kinds of skincare underneath it, and then as well, we're gonna test just how it wears in general and how it looks on my skin. So let's get into it. So here we are at the end of day three. I have a lot of things I want to say. First of all, let's go through and do a day by day recap and kind of give you a breakdown of like what I did that day and what I thought that day. And then we'll get into the wrap up and my thoughts on the first guards up mineral sunscreen. So day one was my first application of the product. It was also a light skincare, light makeup day. This is my first time testing the sunscreen. There was no white cast. So that's to deal with this. It is a tinted sunscreen and not in the same vein of like a tinted moisturizer where it is a cosmetic makeup product that happens to have sunscreen benefits to it. No, the tinting itself is done to the sunscreen filter particles in order to diminish or completely reduce any chance of white cast happening. As a result of that, the finish on this, there's no coverage, no pigmentation really to this. So there's no white cast, which is really, really good. You can see the side by side, the half I applied sunscreen to, which I did my standard three layers versus a side I didn't do that to. And you can see there really is no white cast. It just looks like my skin which for a physical sunscreen is amazing. The first thing I noticed though, is that it was very tacky. As soon as a layer set, which I mean, it set really quick, which is really positive for a physical sunscreen too, it got really tacky. So with each subsequent layer of this, I was like, oh, this is like really snarky. Did a full face of this afterwards. And I was like, okay, no white cast, texture is tacky, but it's not in my beard. There's not a lot of buildup. 
but it pilled and beaded up. That's kind of normal. When you, Whenever I get to play with a sunscreen for the first time, it's kind of learning how it's gonna react in certain kinds of ways, how I have to apply it, and how I need to really work with the sunscreen to make it work for me. So I noticed some weird pilling and some weird texture stuff around my eyes and certain parts of my face. So that day when I did my super light makeup, I was like, oh, I'm gonna use a sponge today. I'm gonna press this foundation on. I am not gonna risk swiping it. That day, it was very, very minimal. I just did hydrating foundation, brows and highlight, right? And so here's the deal. <laughs> a moisturizing sunscreen that I feel like is better for more dry skin paired with a hydrating foundation on a fairly warm day in Chicago. It's not a perfect combination for oily skin. It was a little, a little shiny, a little dewy, a little radiant, but it wasn't horrible. Going into day two, this was another light skincare day. And when I say light skincare, I'm talking just like a couple hydrators. Right now I'm playing around with my Hadalabo whitening lotion, as well as my new Mugwort Essence from I'm From. And sunscreen right on top of it, plus full B. And I knew it was gonna be really hot that day and we were gonna be outside Memorial Day. And so I did full coverage, matte beat. I did mattifying primer, set that. Mattifying foundation, set that. A lot of powders. The first thing I noticed was just, again, Again, texture it like peeled up and beaded up and this is just with skincare it's not even with any makeup on it it's just applying the sunscreen itself it beaded up and peeled up up in my eyelids which I, lot, I get a lot of creasing in my eyelids very generally but it was like in this area where my brows are where I don't why is it pilling there under my eyes why is it pilling there and there was just weird texture situations especially in my like forehead expression lines which again for physical sunscreen to richer sunscreen that happens a lot for makeup, I now know, having worn makeup for so many years, I can't apply a lot of foundation in this area because it does crease. And I was like, oh, okay, well, oh my God, I gotta wear this makeup. I gotta do this wear test today. But I mean, all in all, it was a warm day. We were out and about. We did a lot of things. Um, as you can see in the check-in, to be honest, all things considered, I don't think, because again, I don't blot, I don't touch up anything. I just wear the makeup as it is. It didn't look bad, all things considered. But I mean, I'm going to attribute a lot more of that to the makeup and the sunscreen. And then today was day three. Today's skincare prep was full skincare. So I did first treatment essence, two kinds of toners. I did my mugwort essence, a layer of moisturizer, my azelaic acid dispension, and then did my sunscreen on top of that, I'm pretty sure. So there's a lot of things going underneath the sunscreen. And today was the only day I was like, oh, there's like no texture going on with the sunscreen. Like it applied really evenly. It applied nicely. For every wear test I do now, I indicate the time that I finished applying the makeup and then I wait five minutes. And generally when it comes to sunscreens of any variety, giving yourself that three to five minute buffer window after applying allows the sunscreen to set, form that film of protection. And then that way you can go in with makeup and stuff afterwards, just so it applies better and your sunscreen is still protecting you, right? And so for day three, you see, I do it, I buff it, I set it down. Any minimal texture there was actually like melded away pretty easily. So that was good. And then I go to put makeup on today. And today I was like, oh, today's a, a minimal beat. Today's my first day going back to work. And so I had to wear a mask today. So I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna do the most with my makeup if I'm gonna be covering it all. So I decided to just do my like little bit of concealer, buff it out. Girl, the minute this brush touched my face, that sunscreen was like, peace, deuces, clocking out. It just, like it was as if I took a napkin and just wiped it all off. I did one swipe and all the sunscreen just beat it up, pilled up and just slid off my face. You could see in my under eye, we shot close up footage just so you could see it. Cause I was like, what the f is this? And I might insert a photo or clip I took in natural lighting too. It's like, there's no sunscreen cause it all just moved. The texture of my forehead was really gross, especially here in my eyebrows around my nose was really bad. It just was gone. And I remember, so the whole reason I did the sunscreen review was because Susan Yara did a whole verse line review on her channel. And I was like, I mean, like everything she's saying for the most part looks really good. It's a tinted sunscreen, but she's saying the texture is really nice and lightweight, but she specifically said, this probably would not wear well under makeup. Be careful. And she was right. And here you're seeing the end of day three, I'm greasy. My skin looks like because real, there's no product on my face. If you look up close, the texture of my skin just looks crusty. So getting into my final thoughts on the Verse Guard Zep Mineral Sunscreen. My first thought when I saw this and I pulled it out of the packaging, I was like, what the hell? This is so small. In terms of application, in terms of my four Bs, which is beards, beading, beet, and brown skin friendly. Beard wise, didn't collect. The texture on this one was actually really nice. It is super lightweight. As a result of it being tinted and the texture itself, there's, I didn't sense any collecting in my beard. Beading. It, did beat up it like pilled especially with makeup application it i guess if you like you have to really cater how you do your skincare before this because like with minimal skincare it beat it up but with a lot of skincare 
it didn't. That usually doesn't happen that way. And then that leads me into beats. Like this wasn't really makeup friendly, to be honest, unless I like did the most with my makeup and really ensured that whatever was underneath it was locked down first to put makeup on top of. And then on top of that, like, like I mentioned with application, I felt like the minute I swiped in a wrong way, like the sunscreen was gone, the application was gone as a result of it. And so like the whole thing with sunscreens, especially like why I prefer chemical is it needs to set and form that continuous uninterrupted layer to ensure proper protection. With chemical sunscreen filters, they set into the skin itself, they absorb a little bit, and so that's how you get that nice filter. With physical sunscreen filters, I feel like it just sits on top of your skin, and therefore as a result of that, makeup doesn't sit on your skin, it sits on top of the sunscreen filter. So then as a result of that, if you swipe the wrong way, it's all gone. Where's your protection? And then brown skin friendly, again, this is tinted. The last ingredient on this ingredients list is iron oxide, and iron oxide is used frequently in mineral sunscreen filters to give it that tint, and again, it's not like a BB cream tint where it actually has pigmentation to it. It's just to offset, minimize, or reduce any white cast in the sunscreen itself. And as a result of that, it applies translucently to the skin. That's a really big pro of this sunscreen that I will actually shout it out for is, think of it as just putting on like a primer. My boyfriend just pointed out, it reminds him a lot of the Benefit Professional. High key, yeah. It's tinted in that it's not a white product, but it's so silicone and like, which this isn't silicone, not really. But like the minute you buff it into your skin, it's like gone in terms of like, real texture, but it just sets, sets kind of heavy on the skin. So you could wear this no makeup, no problem. I There's not a doubt in my mind that the more deep, darker, rich skin tones could wear this, pull this off flawlessly. Honestly, I will give it that much. In terms of online claims, it's purely zinc oxide, therefore it gives you a decent amount of like broad spectrum protection, all of UVB and a lot of UVA rays, considering it has a high zinc oxide percentage. You always wanna see a high percentage of zinc oxide. This has 15.2%. Considering it still has the high percentage, the formulation for this is still cosmetically decently elegant. I'm not going to knock it down for that. It says lightweight moisturizing formula. It actually is really decently moisturizing. It's it's not lightweight if you got oily skin. I'm gonna be real with you on that one. It felt heavy. I could feel it on my skin. The Claire's and Perito options that I did videos on were much more lightweight feeling to me. That's just my opinion. But those were kind of more geared towards oily skin types. One of the main product claims is the antioxidant ingredients kind of giving you that boost. There's a sea fennel and the moringa seed extract. But a couple things that just threw me off for this is that those ingredients are literally the last ones on this ingredient list. And if concentration wise, that is a significant, there's very minimal amount in this product. In some aspects, they are correct. Those antioxidants give you the added benefit of free radical protection. The iron oxide's giving you that boost of the blue light protection, as well as a little bit of UVA protection, I believe. But it's so low on the list. I'm like, how significant is this claim? Natural finish, not too dewy, not too matte. I will give it that. It sets down in a very natural finish. You can see in my applications that it's not really greasy and radiant. It's not really mattifying the way that the Claire's Midday UV Blue Shield was, but it's just throughout the day as my like skin got oily, this really went downhill in my opinion. I mean, again, you can see this is, it's hot in Chicago. I had a mask on for a little bit of the day, but like, it's like pure shine right there. And I don't touch up for these for that specific reason of you saying how the sunscreen affects my skin, but also the makeup. And yeah, basically broad spectrum protection. You really want to see broad spectrum when looking for sunscreen just to make sure you're getting the added benefit of like really good UVA protection. But I'm going to be really honest with you. Zinc oxide to me doesn't really do that much for you unless it's paired with some organic slash chemical filters to really boost up that uh, UVA protection. So for what it is, do I recommend this? If you're not trying to do the most for your sunscreen, you are someone with medium tan, dark, deep skin, and you just want a sunscreen that's gonna look good on your skin, yes. If you're gonna wear makeup, heck to the frick no. This is a bad experience. I mean, I wore a primer on day two and it went nicely over this, and I think that might have been a way to bump up how the makeup wore, but it's just, unless you're careful with this, it's gonna pill, it's gonna look bad, and people are gonna question what's wrong with your skin. Price point's too high, point blank, in my opinion. Granted, I always preach, I will never recommend a sunscreen that's above 20 to $25. There's no reason to, when you can get amazing quality, amazing protection, amazing formulas at a much lower price. And this is just at that cusp of $20, but you don't get a lot of product out of this. And considering you need to apply a generous amount, which something I will give Verse, two things I love about Verse as a brand overall. First and foremost, going through their website, reading how to use this and what they say, they actually give really good education and like proper product usage information. And second of all, they are one of those brands who have a lot of ethical points when it comes to like environmental things. So they teach you, 
Here's how to properly recycle this sunscreen. All of our packaging is recyclable. What I got this package in, completely recyclable, 100%. They make that point to make sure that you are environmentally friendly consumer as they are an environmentally conscious brand. But with that, they teach you to use the proper amount, which I say is about a penny size. You'll go through this in a month maybe less. And on top of that, you're technically supposed to reapply sunscreen continuously throughout the day. A, there's not a lot of product in here to do this. So you'll go through this super quickly. Second of all, considering the texture of this and how it warmed my skin, I can't even begin to consider what it's going to feel like and look like to reapply this consistently every two to three hours throughout the day. That just sounds messy. I'm going to give this like a 4.5 out of 10. It was not a bad sunscreen formula, but it a good sunscreen if you need specific things like if you do no makeup it works for all skin tones but i really recommend this if you have normal to drier skin types yeah i'm gonna be real with you you can get much more affordable sunscreens that work a lot better than this check out my claire's and my perito sunscreen video if you want physical sunscreens with minimal white cast i'm not gonna say they don't have white cast but that wear a lot better with makeup or they have a lot better formulas if you have oily skin yeah this isn't gonna do it for me this isn't my favorite sunscreen formula so, is this your one approved? This is my first, no, that's so sad. No. But um, Vera seems to have really good products. Check out Susan Yard's video on their whole line. One thing I love about them is that, again, the whole line's accessible at Target. They have really great formulations, it seems like. And then Gothamista, Renee, is about to do a review on her channel. She has a bit more of a drier skin type, so she and I have very different focuses when it comes to sunscreens. She might have a completely different perspective on this, but if you are more aligned with what she's looking for in a sunscreen, check out her video coming soon. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching today's sunscreen review. There's just been a lot of drops lately, so I know I just did the Perito one and I just uploaded the Claire's one, but there's like a lot of stuff coming out right now, and it's physical formulas that make specific kinds of claims specifically towards lack of white cast and so that piques my interest but if there's anything specific you'd like me to test out in the same manner whether it's sunscreen or anything else please leave that down in the comments below it's been really fun like testing new formulas and new products and kind of seeing how people react to the videos i got a really overwhelmingly positive response from the perito video that's why i keep making these whatever you want me to test or whatever you'd like to see me try on this channel just let me know um, i'm more than happy to do it for you and these are a lot of fun to film and yeah if you like this kind of video give it a thumbs up Hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, and yeah, thanks guys. Bye.